Hello and welcome to the brewery. Today I'm going to be making a big imperial stout, mostly for next Christmas. But while I'm doing it, let's have a look at all the kits in the brewery, how it works and how I've got it all controlled by the computers over there. Okay, so first things first, just the basic setup before the brew day. Uh, there's nothing in the mash tun yet, I'm going to put the grain in in a minute. We've loaded the setup onto the controller. The Holmes tank is full of water plugged in with its temperature sensor in it. The two temperature sensors attached to the mash tun are also plugged in. We have some yeast getting ready and the HLT is coming up to temperature. Now, when I said loaded the settings earlier, you may be wondering what I meant. Well, if you view the controller web page, web interface on a PC, you gain an extra box showing an area to drop a beer XML file into. So if you export a file from something like Beersmith and drag and drop it into that area, it will load the file and parse it and use that to update the settings for the mash temperatures and the HLT temps, as you can see. So inside the HLT we have two elements. One is controlled by the computer host system and the other is just a booster element that goes straight to a plug that I can turn on and off as I need to. So this is the Herms tank. A lot of people run Herms inside their HLT but I run as a separate tank so I have a smaller volume of water to change the temperature of in addition to the mash. Uh, in this case we have a 1.2 kilowatt element in there and another temperature sensor going in the other end into our homemade thermo well. So as the brewery gets ready the computer controller is in its preparing mode. In this mode it's bringing the herms up to temperature, bringing the uh, strike water up to the temperature. Uh, both of these temperatures have been pulled in from the beer XML data that I uh, exported out of Beersmith. Now we're ready to mash in. So I usually, well almost always underlet, so the HLT is connected down to the pump and that is then connected with a long pipe down to the manifold inside the mash tun. On the site tube I've marked the level of water once I've finished mashing in with this massive brew. This is a lot of water. I think it'll fit in the mash tun. I hope. So now I've reset the system up for the mashing. Uh, the wort flows out of the mash tun here, around the long pipe again. This time into the pump, where it pumped up here through the Herms tank in a coil and then up through this insulated pipe and then back into the mash tun. The controller is now in mash and sparge mode where it is holding the flow temperature which is the one going through the top of the mash tun. This time we're targeting 65 degrees for a 65 degree mash. I'm mashing quite low for this beer because it is so big. I'm hoping it will actually ferment out. There's a lot of uh, non-base malts in there. 
Um, the HLT is a little bit below temperature because this being a massive beer, I ran out most of the liquid and had to refill it a bit. Uh, so obviously I turned the heating off for that. That will now be pulling itself up to the temperature for the mash out infusion. Um, what that ha what that does is once the the temperature changes in the HLT are done uh, a third of the way into the step before they're needed, just to give me a little bit of time uh, in case I'm running late and it doesn't start changing temperature till I've finished the previous step. And now we're ready to start sparging. We have uh, water coming off the, well it's still the HLT at this point, going through the pump and up and in through the sparge manifold at the top here and out the bottom is flowing the wort into a simple plastic bucket for collection. I use a single mode for mash and sparge as all it's doing is holding the various vessels at various temperatures. I may move to a separate sparge mode uh, once I start controlling the pump from the controller panel. Right, and now the sparge is over and I've transferred the wort into what's now the boiler, was the HLT. Uh, as you can see we've got 28-ish litres. I'm actually going to boil this down a little bit to start with since I'm going to be uh, pitching a 2 litre starter into it. Uh, you can see it's coming up to temperature. So the controller is now in boil mode. Uh, this means I have the, the boost, the second element is completely on all the time and the one that's under control of this system uh, will stay on until we get to about 96 degrees at which point it will cut out uh, and leave just the other element running. The idea here is to get the gets up to temperature as quickly as possible with both elements and one element is plenty to maintain a good rolling boil. And we're reaching the end of the boil so I've now set up for well recirculation then cooling and whirlpool. So currently it's just running a whirlpool at boiling point uh, to keep well to make sure everything is clean and sterile. Well sterile um, as much as possible. So the wort has been coming out of the boiler, through the pump, through the plate chiller, and back in through uh, the whirlpool connection. Over here, the controller is in boil mode where really only the right hand dial is relevant, just showing approximately what temperature you, we're at. Um, it's out a little bit at boiling point. Um, we're just a little bit off the boil because I've just set the um, system up to recirculate through the, through the, the chiller. Uh, so we've lost a little bit of temperature. Should be back up to the boil in a few minutes. Well, the beer's in the fermenting fridge, just getting to the right temperature before I oxygenate it and pitch the yeast. Um, the yeast is now in the kitchen. You may have noticed it vanished halfway through the video. It was getting a bit warm in here. Um, so I moved it next door where it's a little bit cooler. Um, so a little bit of time before to get the beer to the right temperature to pitch the yeast, get some oxygen in it, and that's the end of the brew day. And 24 hours later, the beer is fermenting quite vigorously. I'm going to need to clean up and get a bigger blow-off tube. I hope you enjoyed the tour of what I do when I'm making beer, especially a really big beer, and I will see you in another video.